fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Jed Powers, who owned a small general store in Meadows, entered his home on the edge of town. His wife, Addie, looked up as he entered. Whoa! All right, Jed. You might as well tell me and get it off your chest. What's the big deal you just put across this time? Oh, 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 Addie, you're a hard one to fool. How'd you guess? Go on with you. All I have to do is to look at your face. I can always tell by the satisfied look you have when you come home. (laughs) Oh, tell me about it. As a matter of fact, Eddie, I did put over a big deal. Oh, I knew it. Every big deal you put over means a loss to the store. Now, listen here, Eddie. That's no way to talk. Just because I got stuck with a load of snake oil a few weeks ago is no reason to... Oh, is that so? And what about the wagon load of painted forked sticks that was supposed to, to find water for anyone holding one of them to the ground? We had to buy them back and use them for firewood. I know, but after... And then you bought a lot of little pills that were supposed to, to make coal oil when you put them in water. <laughs> but they didn't. And last month you bought up a load of snake oil that was supposed to cure rheumatism and, and other aches and pains. We've been giving back money on that for the past week. But this time I got a bargain, Eddie, sure as shooting. Oh, well... What'd you buy now? Got a whole wagon load of surefire hair grower, that's what... And got it for less than he first asked for it, too. What? I got a bottle of it right here in my pocket. Let me see that. Lightning hair grower. Why, Jed Powers, I I heard about this stuff when I was over in Pinko's a month ago. Fact is, I saw a bottle like this, red label and all. Well, what about it? That doesn't say it isn't... When they found out we owned a store here in Meadows... They told me to watch out for a short, uh, baldy-headed man selling this stuff. In case he ever came here. (laughs) It's nothing but colored water, that's what. What did the hombre look like who talked you into this? Well, uh, he was uh, short and, well, bald-headed. Oh, you fool. 
Why should he be bald-headed if he had a wagon load of stuff that he says would grow hair fast? Answer me that. My thunder, I never thought of that, Eddie. He, he was such a fast talker and offered me such a bargain. Oh, I... now we're stuck with a wagon load of that stuff. Uh, how much did you pay for it? Well, the whole load come to... Uh, $300. $300? Oh, Jed Powers, we'll be in the poorhouse next thing you know. Oh, I knew I should have gone to the store today. You get right back down to the hotel and find that man, do you hear? Make him give back that money and take his colored water back. Get the sheriff to go with you when you see him. He was fixing to leave town when he sold me the hair grower. That's why I got it cheap. But I'll go down and see if I can find him right now. Jed hurried through town to the cafe to find the sheriff before going to the hotel. Hey, Sheriff, you're just the man I want to see. What's happened, Jed? Somebody robbed the store, Jed? Hold on, everybody. Let Jed talk. Why are you looking for me, Jed? I want to go to the hotel and find that short, bald hombre who came to town in that fancy wagon. You got to go with me and make him give back the money I gave him for some fake hair grower. I remember him. His name's Lucky Baker. He was in here at noon, Jed. Yep, and it's too late to go looking for him, Jed. He left Meadows hours ago. Just after he was in here at noon. No. Oh, and he'll just about skin me alive. Well, uh, how did this hombre cheat you? The stuff's no good. And he found out about him over in Pecos. She forgot to tell me, and when he come into the store today, she wasn't there, and... Uh, well, uh, I bought a wagon load of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now take Addie's twin sister over in Oak Ridge. <laughs> her rheumatism's kept her in a wheelchair for most a year. Yet she's making a big success of her store. Uh, that is, since her husband died. <laughs> <laughs> you don't find Kate buying stuff she can't sell. I uh, know. Hattie's always harping about how her twin sister Kate is better at running a store than I am, in spite of her crippled leg. Well, Hattie's right about that, Jed. You gotta admit it. And there's no telling which way that lucky baker went. I guess you'll just have to take it as a lesson and say goodbye to your money, Jed. <laughs> I don't guess you'll sell any of that stuff in this town, uh, boys. <laughs> Tonto, Indian companion to the Lone Ranger, had been listening in the cafe when Jed told his story to the sheriff. It was a short time later when Tonto reined up at the camp he shared in the nearby hills with the Lone Ranger. Oh, Scott, oh, fella, oh, fella. Oh. I expected you back before dark, Tonto. What kept you so late? Well, blacksmith have other horses. Me have to wait to get shoe fixed and scout. Oh? Uh, me go into cafe short time. Me hear storekeeper tell sheriff him get cheated. <laughs> Don't tell me Jed Powers bought something else he can't sell. <laughs> that right. This time, him buy many bottles of hair grower. Him buy it from bald-headed man named Lucky Baker. Lucky Baker, huh? Ah. I've heard of him. He's known to be a very smart salesman. And a crooked one. Oh, if not good for Jed Powers, him not have much money. Did the sheriff do anything about the crooked deal? Well, him say Lucky Baker leave town at noon. Him go long way by now. Yes, that's right. Anyway, Jed would have to get proof that the hair grower isn't any good. Well, him say wife no storekeeper in Pecos who buy some. Him have to give money back to people who buy it. I see. Jed has very poor judgment. His wife's twin sister, Kate, over in Oak Ridge, is just the opposite. She's a very successful storekeeper. Ah, he hear sheriff say that. Oh. Him say Kate have rheumatism, sit in wheelchair, but her run store good. Yes, that's right. Kate is crippled up with rheumatism. Hmm. Jed's wife and her sister are identical twins. They look almost exactly alike. I wonder. Toto, you and I'll ride to town to have a talk with Jed. I just thought of something that may turn the tables on Lucky Baker. All right, let's go. Yes, Silver. Easy, big boy. Easy. Now, easy. One, Silver. Come on. Come The 
short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, after circling the town, came to the small home of Jed and Addie Powers. Oh, so, okay. 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 Let him see you first, Tonto. He knows you. Uh. An Indian? What do you... Oh, it's you, Tonto. You need something from the store, maybe? No. No, me bring friend. We come to talk. Friend? Good I... evening, Jed. Mask me. I got the mask, Jed. As uh, Tonto told you, I'm a friend. That's right. He maybe help get crook who sells stuff for hair. Well, I guess Tonto being such a good customer and all, I, I can take his word for it. Come on in. Well, thanks. Well, land sakes, Jed. What's it's the all right, Eddie. You? you know Tonto here. This mask Aubrey is a friend of his. Oh. Well, what'd you come for, Tonto? When we come about Lucky Baker. Well, that's the crook who sold Jed all that fake hair stuff. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I heard Jed bought a load of snake oil. That turned out to be a fake. <laughs> he sure did, mister. And what's more, that isn't all he got stuck with either. Before that, he loaded the shelves up now, with a Eddie, lot of Now, Eddie, little... you no use going into all that. Just water under the bridge, so to speak. Yeah. And that kind of water will sink us to the bottom, Jed Powers. Oh, if only you had the knack for running a store that my twin sister Kate has over in Oak Ridge. Yes, yes, we... I, uh, I know about Kate, Mrs. Powers. I'm hoping that with her help, and, of course, yours and Jed's, we might turn the tables on Lucky Baker. Well, do you really think you can? Say, now, if you know of a way... Now, listen closely. This is a plan I have in mind. following morning, Jed, as instructed by the Lone Ranger, entered a small print shop in the town. Uh, morning, Jed. What can I do for you? I want to get several hundred labels with printing on them, like it says in this sample, Hank. Yeah, now let me see. Magic cure ointment for aches, pains, and stiff muscles. Well, what you doing, Jed? Making up your own stuff now? <laughs> Nobody in this town will go for anything you mix up. Nope. It come already mixed, Hank. I just have to paste the labels on, that's all. Just you get them labels ready as soon as you can and let me do the worrying about selling the stuff. I'll come in tomorrow to pick them up. So long, Hank. So long. Meantime, Tonto, who had left at dawn to follow Lucky Baker's trail, rode all day and most of the next night. He came upon Lucky, camped just outside of a small town far to the west of Meadow. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh. Come, Scott. Come, fella. Well, Indian, what do you want? Well, me ride plenty far. Try and find you. What do you want to find me for? Who sent you? Well, me here, you man who sell medicine to store in medicine. Well, what if I did? Me want get plenty bottles. Maybe sell them to Indians. Why didn't you buy all you want from the store in medicine? Anyhow, what do the Indians want with hair oil? Oh, no, no. Me not want hair oil. Me want medicine named Magic Cure. Magic Cure? Uh. I didn't sell them that stuff. Never heard of it. Oh, that too bad. Me hear it plenty good. Work like magic. Make bad muscles good again. Then why didn't you get some at the store, like I said? Oh, him not sell me more than one bottle. Many people who hear a magic cure go to store. I wonder where Jed Powers bought the stuff. Oh, him have to tell you that. Say, uh, uh, did you hear anything about some... Uh, some hair grower he bought a couple of days ago? Well, me hear him say him get bargain in hair grower. Uh, I guess he hasn't found out anything yet, then. Huh? Me not savvy. Oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Say, look, Indian, I'll be back this way in about a week. You watch out for me, and I might have some of that magic cure you're asking for. Uh, me, me wait. Adios. Adios. Get him up, Scout. Hmm. Well, powers don't know yet that I stuck him with that hair grower. <laughs> It'll be safe enough for me to go back and see about that medicine the Indian spoke of. If it's really as good as he says... I can make a pile of money with something like that. I'll hit the trail for Meadows right now. (laughs) 
The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. After leaving Lucky's camp, Tonto cut over to the town of Oak Ridge with a note to Addie Power's twin sister, Kate. Then he headed back to meet the Lone Ranger in their camp near Meadows. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh. Well, Tonto, how did you make out? Well, me find Lucky Baker. Me tell him about magic cure. Him get ready to come back. See Jed Powers. Good. We'll have all the rooms made when he arrives. Oh, uh, did you see Addie's sister, Kate? Uh-huh. Her driving over in buckboard, like notes say. We'll ride into town and see Jed. Here, Silver. I feel sure Lucky will fall for the plan we made. And I've said it before. Easy. One, two, three. Oh, scout. Meantime, the crowd in the cafe in Meadows looked up as the door opened and one of the townsmen entered excitedly. That crook, Lucky Baker, riding this way on the West Trail. I guess you don't know yet that Jed found out the hair grower isn't any good. He's got a nerve coming back this way. Jed ought to have him arrested. Where's the sheriff? Yeah. Well, now, wait a minute, all of you. I say let's not wait to find the sheriff. We know Lucky's a crook, so let's go out to meet him. Good idea. Bring along a rope and string him up. Sure, that's the thing to do. Come, Come on, everybody, before on. the sheriff gets wind of it. We'll show them crook salesmen they can't pull their crooked deals here and get away with it. <laughs> A short time later, Lucky was driving along in his wagon when he saw the crowd approaching. Yeah, looks like a posse come from town. Wonder who they're at. Oh, why, why they're shooting at me. Oh, oh, there. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, boy. Hey, you. Get down from that wagon, Prado. Yeah, sure, sure, I'll get down. Why, what's the matter? What do you want? We heard about the fake hair stuff you sold to Jed Powers. Now, now, wait a minute. He hasn't had a chance to prove it's no good yet. So how can you say it isn't? His what? wife learned about the loads you sold over in Pecos a while back. It was nothing but colored water. That's right. You stole Jed's money. We don't stand for that here in Meadows. No, no, right. don't. Bring the rope, boys. Wait, rope? Come on, you. Get over under that tree. No, now, wait. You can't hang me. Listen. Shut up and get over there. Put the noose over his head. There it is. Oh. We'll swing him high. We ought to douse him with that hair girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, wait. I'll do anything. Shut up. Any... All right, men. Haul him up. Hey, look. A masked man and an engine. They must be in with Lucky. Cut him down. Uh, blood. Oh, my wrist. Oh, 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 oh. These guns say you let Lucky go. Take that rope from his neck. Quick. Better do as he says. Them guns are mean looking. Don't let them get away with this. They can't gun all of us. Hey, here comes the sheriff and Jed. We'll get the devil now for this. What's going on here? Well, we came to get lucky. Two of his pals, his master hombre, and the Indians stopped us. It's a good thing they did. We'll have no lynching here while I'm sheriff. That's the masked man I told you about, sheriff. Well, I'm glad to know you, mister. Thanks, sheriff. Well, he... Came just in time. That name, Lucky, fits you all right, Baker. What brought you back here? I was coming to try to make a deal with Jed. He was going to cheat him again. He's got a lot of nerve. Yeah. What uh, kind of a deal did you come to make? <clears throat> well, that Indian there, I don't know what he's doing here, but he told me about that magic cure medicine you have. 
Well, what about it? Well, if it was as good as he seemed to think, I was going to offer to buy it for twice what you paid for it. And I'd take back that hair grower, too. <clears throat> well, what about it, Jed? You want to try to make a deal with him? Or do you want to press charges against him for the hair grower deal he put over on you? But I didn't really get stuck on that hair grower stuff, Sheriff. Addie found out it's mighty good for dyeing leather and preserving it. I can sell it at double the price. I could use some of that. I wonder if it is good for leather. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it looks like Lucky Baker did himself out of something worthwhile. Wait, wait now. Look, look, Powers. You proved to me that the magic cure medicine is really good and that the hair stuff is good for leather, and I'll buy it all at your price. Well... Come to my store this afternoon, and I'll try to give you a demonstration. All right, men. Get back to town, and you can thank the mask hombre from saving you from the law for a lynching. Hey, boys. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Now, Lucky, get on your wagon and get going. You can come to Jed's store after lunch. Sure, and I'll be there. Well, I'm sure glad you come along in time, mister. I am, too. Oh, I suppose Jed told you about our plan to fool Lucky. <laughs> he sure did. Good. Kate's at the Powers' place now, waiting to do her part. <laughs> Good thing Lucky never saw my wife, Addie. After he gets a dose of his own trickery, that Lucky Baker won't go around cheating storekeepers anymore. I'll bet on that. Now, let's get back to town. All right, Let me go. One silver. One silver. The rest of that morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, with Jed and Addie, were busy in the back room of the store pasting the new labels that read Magic Cure on the bottles of snake oil Jed had bought some time ago. Other labels reading Leather Dye and Preservative were being pasted on the bottles of Hair Grower. This here Hair Grower really is good for leather, so Lucky won't be stuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll sure have trouble getting rid of the Magic Cure, though. I'm waiting to see his face when he finds out he's been tricked. Uh, he'll be plenty mad, maybe. I remember, Jed. Make no promises for it and make him force the sale. <laughs> and don't worry, I'll do it right. Good. One of the men is going to wheel Kate in after Lucky gets here. Addie will keep out of sight back in here till the proper time. You teach Lucky good lesson. There, that's the last one. Now all we have to do is to wait for Lucky to come in and buy the entire lot. That afternoon, Jed and a few of the townsmen were in the store when the sheriff came in with Lucky. Well, Lucky, I see you got here like you said. Yes, now, let me see one of them bottles of magic cure. Sure. That that is. You see, this will really cure rheumatism and the like just by rubbing it on? I didn't say any such thing. The label says it's good, and a good many folks has been asking about it. Hey, somebody help me with this wheelchair. Yeah, I'll help you. Thank you. This lady wants to try some of that magic cure for rheumatism. She can't walk, you know. Yes, yeah, sure. We all know about Miss Kate. So you want to try the magic cure ointment, Miss Kate? Yes, and if you have a private place I can go to, I'll use some of it right away. Say, uh, are you really crippled up like you say, ma'am? Look at my ankles. That'll tell you, mister. See how swollen they are? Yes, that's right. They, they sure are. I'll get a bottle of the ointment. You can wheel it right into that back room there. All right. I'll give her the bottle. I guess we can't tell much about it right away. Well, she come a long way to try it, Lucky. Wonder if it'll really help her. It isn't for me to say. If it does help her, I could make a fortune with this stuff. <laughs> so could I. But but you said you'd sell it to me if it's really on the level. Nope. I didn't say I'd sell out to you. You asked me to sell, that's all. But I... Jed! Sheriff, look here! I, I, I'm walking! By thunder, that's right, you are. Well, what do you know? I, I'm, I'm so excited, even... Even my voice sounds different. But you look the same to me. It's the same woman, all right. And the swelling in her ankles. It's all gone. Oh, yep, her ankles seem all right to me, Lucky. But it's amazing. That magic cure is a miracle worker. Sure seems that way, don't it? Now, look, you've got to sell me all you have, Jed. Don't have to do anything of the kind. I'll give you double what you've been asking for it. 
And I'll take back the hair grower, too. Nope. The hair grower has turned out to be a good leather dye and preserver. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I've got yeah, labels yeah, on it, and I can sell that at a good price. Then I'll give you double what you paid me for it. That is, if you sell me all the magic cure, too. Well, uh, I don't like to do it. <laughs> now, look, look now. Here, here's the money. All I got. And I'll draw up a paper saying I got exclusive right to that stuff. We'll do this deal real business-like. Mm-hmm. Really wants to do this. Oh, no. Hey, go ahead, Jed. Sell it to her. Give him some paper and a pen. Well, all right, Lucky. You asked for it. Oh. Well, Sheriff, this is one deal that's really on the level. And you're here to witness it. Well, if you really want that stuff, I guess it's all right for Jed to sell to you. Here's the paper and pen. Well, I'll write out the deal right now. Lucky's sure anxious to close the deal. If you want to back out now, Lucky, you can uh, don't be swayed by what you think happened to this lady. Might never help anyone else. I'll take that chance. Here, here's the paper. And here's $1,200 to close the deal. Now, uh, we'll, we'll both sign. All right. right. Now, you asked for it, like I said before. There it is. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited about the sale you made, Jeb. Now we don't have to take a loss. No, oh, what? Who are you, ma'am? Why, I... I'm Jed's wife. Thought you knew. Somebody come in and wheel me out. I'm ready. Uh, I'll go wheel her out. No, no, wait a minute. Isn't this the lady who was in the wheelchair? Who, me? In a wheelchair? (laughs) Never been in one in my life. I guess it'll be some time before I know if that medicine helped any. (laughs) No, no, hold on. I've been tricked. Oh, uh, what do you mean, tricked, Lucky? Well, I... I thought that lady in the wheelchair was the one who... Well, they look alike. Yes, of course. They're twin sisters. You jumped to conclusions, Lucky. And Jed didn't want to sell to you. You talked him into it, didn't he, man? That's right, Sheriff. Well, Lucky, seems like we're sort of evened up. I'll leave now. Perhaps Lucky will learn a lesson from this and deal honestly in the future. Adios. Adios, Adios, man. Oh... I don't know who that masked man is, but I got a feeling he had something to do with this. <laughs> he, he saved your life, Lucky. And just now, he saved you from being a crook in spite of yourself. You see, the Lone Ranger knew if you got the chance, you'd even trick yourself into a bad deal. And he sure was right. <laughs> <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Thank you.